Sweet Dream may be the most beautiful piece in the entire children's album. It paints a picture of the end of the day where you're in that wonderful land between sleep and waking, where everything is lovely and you're thinking about all the good things that have happened in the day, perhaps some that were a little bit troublesome and hoping for an even better day the next day. The piece is not easy at all. It is structured as a three-layer cake. There is, of course, the melody in the right hand. There is the melody in the left hand. voice, the one with the little eighth notes, where we have to work so very hard to keep these notes quiet, to keep notes quiet, the best prescription of course is to make sure to play them right from the surface of the key and heaven forfend not from the air. However, the difficulties don't end there. So, left hand put together consists of these two voices, the melody and the accompaniment figure. Notice how careful I was to create a legato in the left hand. This takes creative fingering. Sometimes, um, if you can't reach the creative fingering, you may have to wiggle and to substitute fingers a great deal. The legato in the left hand should not be left to the pedal to do. It will sound different. It might be messy if you don't get the pedal just right. It may be too thick if the pedal is too much. And in any case, we will hear the pickups. So do spend a few moments figuring out the fingers. Bigger problems, the middle notes now. A lot of students, when they see a legato marking, they somehow assume that it applies to everything equally. And they try to create a legato between the eighth notes and the melody notes in the bass. Do you notice how heavy that makes the little notes sound? I always recommend practicing the eighth notes practically staccato, at least in the beginning. So do you notice I've left a little bit of air space at the end of the eighth notes for me to make sure that I'm still holding the left hand note down like I'm supposed to. This is actually a rather advanced technique and quite difficult and very much worth practicing the left hand a lot. The right hand doesn't seem particularly difficult by itself, but it's way too easy to create a sound in the right hand that is either thin or that is harsh. I heard both. I don't like them. So our job is to create a fully cantabile sound. To play cantabile sound beautifully, we have to forget about what we have been taught about playing always with rounded fingers. When we play with rounded fingers, we play only on this little skinny fingertip. Instead, let's think about playing on the whole cushy part of our finger. This will mean a lot more of the fingers available to press the key all the way down. However, it means that we can't curve our fingers the way we're used to. But it's okay. I don't recommend doing that while playing Bach or Mozart. However, we know that the romantic pianists play like that. We know that uh, from discussions of the performances of, and teaching of both Liszt and Chopin. So flatten out your hand. And as always, when the fingers are flat, their different lengths, and the hand must turn in the direction of the short fingers. Normally, with the great composers who are pianists themselves, uh, 
if you just turn your hand where the melody is going, your hand will freeze itself. In this case, though, there is a little bit of a problem because the phrase ends on finger number one. Finger number one may be short, but it's fat, and it sits on this big piece of meat over here. So left unsupervised, the thumb really will thump and be heavy. But the good news is the thumb has so many more nerve endings than all the other fingers, and it's very easy to control. So if you tell the thumb to play quietly, it will. With both hands now made beautiful, we have decisions to make. Which of them is melody? Well, the simple answer is both, but how much? So in the beginning, I think it's very logical that the right hand really is 90% of all the melody. that melody, it's getting a little bit old, isn't it? So we can try variants. We can make the left hand assume a more important function. Not 100%, but maybe 50. because I started to listening to the left hand much more melodically. It's an option. In the middle section, of course, the left hand is the leader. In the next phrase, the right hand comes in somewhat in canon to the left hand, and we have decisions to make. Is the left hand going to continue being the melody with the right hand being an echo? Or will the right hand take over? Or will they share? So here's option number one. Left hand's in charge. It's an option. So option number two. Left hand comes in. Right hand comes in and takes over completely. Not bad. Option number three. Left hand comes in, right hand comes in, and they share. Tchaikovsky, we have to decide what to do about the overall structure. The middle section is very exciting, but the A sections in the beginning to end are identical, and we're always looking for variation. Maybe you think after the exciting middle section, we want to come back to exactly the same thing. It is legitimate. What if you think perhaps that we want to do something different? So we can make one of the repetitions of the A. My favorite is after the tumultuous middle section. Sound like a dream, perhaps with the una corda. which is the pulling and pushing of time. This is something that had become completely indispensable 
towards the mature romantic period, particularly in pieces that are on the slow side, like this one. Without it, we risk sounding very mechanical and square. So think about our heartbeat, which is how we regulate tempo. When you see a patient in hospital with a completely regular heartbeat, unfortunately, it means that the machine is doing the beating of the heart. That is not what we would like. So a normal, healthy person will have heartbeats that vary. When we get a little bit more excited, our heart beats faster. And then when we relax, our heart beats slower. Now, we do not want the variation to be to the point of arrhythmia. So once again, we do not want to be in the emergency room, right? But a little bit of a variation is extremely important. So in a regular phrase, in the romantic period, it is easiest to think about a rubato as going completely together with the dynamics. So when a phrase will start softer, get louder, and end softer, as most phrases do, we can follow up with the rubato, start a little bit slower, get faster as we get more excited, and then finally slow down. So let me show an exaggerated version. then the music will be allowed to flow and to breathe. I think that was much better, don't you think? Of course. The rubato should vary significantly from one phrase to another. No matter how beautiful rubato was for the first phrase, by the time we hear it the fifth time, we're going to become motion sick. So you have to think of rubato for each phrase, but also overall for the whole section. The section begins overall slower and calmer, so we do a lot more of the giving of time, right? Slowing down. As in the middle of the section things become very excited, perhaps we want to concentrate more on the actually rondo part of the phrase rather than the ritardando. And then by the end of the phrase things calm down again. So there is so much scope for individuality and making a perfectly personal interpretation. Enjoy!